is a living memorial. Uh, it was work and uh, scholarship commemorates the ideals and uh, concerns of Woodrow Wilson um, as uh, both a distinguished scholar and a national leader. President Wilson felt strongly that the scholar and the policymaker were engaged in a common enterprise. The History and Public Policy Program celebrates the ideals of, of President Wilson by focusing on the relationship between history and policymaking. That is, um, we seek to explore the advantages as well as the dangers in using historical lessons in making uh, current policy decisions. Today's event is co-sponsored by the Kissinger Institute on China and the United States, which is dedicated uh, to promoting greater awareness of the U.S.-China relationship and its impact on both countries and the world. Uh, let me thank my colleagues in the History and Public Policy Program and uh, the Kissinger Institute, um, Christina Terzieva, uh, Sandy Fo, and uh, Alison Lilikoff for making this event possible. So I'm, I'm pleased to introduce our presenters, uh, Dai Chao and our commentator, um, uh, Greg Brzezinski. Uh, Dai Chao is, is uh, a Wilson Center public policy scholar, professor of history at East China Normal University uh, in Shanghai, China, and a senior fellow at East China Normal University's Center for Cold War International History Studies. Uh, he is, or he has also taught at um, at Nanjing um, International Studies University and Nanjing University. His main research interests uh, encompass Chinese foreign policy during the Cold War, with a focus on Sino-U.S. and Sino-India relations, uh, also U.S. diplomatic history and Cold War international history. Uh, he has authored a number of, uh, or authored and, and co-authored a number of publications. I think. Um, the, they are listed on the, the biography or the bios um, available outside. Um, Greg Brzezinski is a Wilson Center Fellow, um, a senior advisor to the Center's North Korea International Documentation Project, which I oversee, and an associate professor of history and international affairs at the George Washington University, where he also serves as co-director of the Cold War Group. He also happens to be my dissertation director. Um, <laughs> uh, Professor Brzezinski is a specialist on U.S. East Asian relations during the Cold War, focusing on the social and cultural impact of the, of the United States uh, on East Asia. Uh, his first book, Nation Building in South Korea, examines why South Korea was among the few post-colonial nations to achieve economic development and political democracy. Um, and it was the first monograph uh, to use, uh, or on that subject, to use both American and Korean uh, materials. He's currently pursuing um, research on several projects. One is uh, a study on the cultural impact of the Korean War in America, Korea, and China. Uh, another is um, another uh, focuses on Sino-American competition in the Third World uh, during the Cold War. Um, so. Professor Dai, I think um, you'll be speaking for approximately 20 minutes. Great. Um, uh, and then Greg will, will comment on your presentation, about 10 minutes. Um, and then we'll have time uh, for, um, or after that, for questions from the audience. So. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, James. Good afternoon. Uh, 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 thank you very much for your comment. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for your coming. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here to describe uh, briefly my uh, proposed research. Uh, I'd like to divide my uh, presentation into two parts. Uh, first uh, uh, part, uh, part I uh, uh, discuss the role of the trade liberalization uh, in uh, Nixon Kissinger's diplomacy and the tongue. And uh, the second part, I will cover uh, the impact of such uh, uh, trade liberalization on the, uh, uh, China's modernization and on China's uh, reform and opening up to the outside. Uh, on the April 14, 1971, more than 20 years after the United States enforced the total embargo 
against the People's Republic of China in December 1950 when China entered the Korean War. The Nixon administration announced an end to embargo against China. Trade then resumed uh, between the United States and China without a full diplomatic relationship between the two governments. Sino-American economic uh, normalizations was uh, significant to the development of uh, U.S.-China relations, the transformation of China economy, and the unfolding of the Cold War. The resumption of uh, U.S.-China trade uh, opened the opportunity for the two countries uh, to move beyond the expedient uh, cooperation against uh, the Soviet Union and uh, develop an uh, independent and enduring the economic uh, relationship. China took this opportunity to import equipment and uh, high technology from the West. Most uh, uh, of them uh, were from the United States. Such import had uh, provided the turning point for ending the Cultural Revolution in China and uh, exacted the impact of the normalization on uh, the, the, the uh, uh, Sino-American uh, uh, relations and on the China modernization and on China's road to the reform and the opening to outside. Uh, as to the uh, trade liberalization policy of Nixon administration, in a special message to the Congress in the, uh, in the November 1969, Nixon stressed that the pattern of the world trade was changing. New development in the uh, rapidly evolving world economy will require the new responses and the new e uh, e initiatives. Nixon pointed out that uh, there, are, uh, there was a fourth factors had to stand out that require the United States continue moderating the American trade policy. Number one, the world economy independence has become a fact. Number two, uh, the United States must recognize the number of uh, foreign countries now competing fully with the United States in the world market. Uh, number three, the traditional plus in the United States uh, balance of trade has disappeared in the 1960s, uh, uh, in the late 1960s and in the early 1970s. Number four, less developed countries need improved access to the market of the industrialized countries. So, uh, uh, as Nixon said, our goal is an open world. Trade is one of the doors to uh, the open world. In Nixon's eyes, the major sectors of American economy are actually affected by international trade. Nixon believed in the principle of freer trade because a policy of trade uh, restriction would add to the domestic in, uh, in inflation and uh, jeopardize the competitiveness in the world market. The basis of the Nixon administration approach to the na uh, international community uh, 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 problem in terms of four uh, economic uh, freedoms, freedom to uh, uh, trade, freedom to travel, freedom to investment, and the freedom to exchange uh, technology. Uh, so, uh, U.S. policy toward uh, trade liberalization was an important part of Nixon Kissinger diplomacy and a critical means to make the Tang strategy a reality. Uh, after re-evaluating the East-West trade policy of the United States, Nixon and his men began to adjust 
U.S. embargo and trade control policy toward communist countries conducted by his、uh, predecessors under the system of Kukum and took steps to、uh, toward the policy of trade liberalization. The policy make, makers within the Nixon administration. Examining American policies such as the trade with the communist blocs,、uh, including the Soviet Union,、uh, Eastern、uh, Europe countries, and the communist Asia state, they especially、uh, reappraise、uh, the following elements such as the effective of present measure. The, stra- the strategy in- impact of this control upon the communist nations' relations with the、uh, U.S. alliance.、Uh, based on these assessments,、uh, foreign policy planners within the Nixon administration consider and formulate an、uh, uh, alternative policy approach. To the trade liberalizations, they advocated that the United States should remove the export, export control and embargo policies relative both to the non-strategic, uh, 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 accommodated and to the strategic items in order to promote and enlarge the trade with the Soviet Union. Uh, with the Eastern Europe and with the mainland China, from January nineteen sixty nine to December nineteen seventy four, National Security Council issues two hundred and six report under the name of National Security Study Memorandum, uh, uh, that's NSSM, and the six.、Uh, Twenty-six report of these NSSMs had relevance directly to the foreign trade policies, to Kukum's East-West trade and the trade policy toward China. At the same time, NSC had finished the two hundred and sixty-four reports cover about mentioned issues. In addition. U.S. Congress also amended、uh, the, the the important act of the、uh, Export Control Act of 1964, uh, six, uh, uh, 49, by passing the Export Administration Act of 1969.、Uh, the new law declared that it was the policy of the United States. To encourage trade with all countries, which the, the United States has the diplomatic relations or the trading relations, the new law undoubtedly gave the great line to the trade liberalization legally. All of these approaches and policies explain the important influence of the foreign trade which exerted upon the. Nixon Kissinger diplomacy and their policy of uh, detente. Uh, uh, I, I now the discuss the second part of my presentation, the、uh, U.S. policy toward the, the trade liberalization and the China's reform and the opening.、Uh, Nixon said shortly before his death, he said, "I will be known historically for two things: Watergate and the opening to China." When he here、uh, learned from the Pakistani channel that Beijing will invite him to、uh, visit China, Nixon, according to his memoirs, uh, uh, proposed that. A toast,、uh, he said to Henry Kissinger. Henry, we are drinking a toast not to ourselves personally, or to our success, or to our administration policy, which have made this message 
and made made tonight possible. Let's drink to、uh, generations to come who may have a better chance to live in peace because of what we have done.、Uh, for once, Nixon was not、uh, exaggerating. The U.S.、Uh, trade liberalization policy towards China, I think, was the cornerstone of. Uh, Nixon Kissinger efforts to construct a new strategy alignment of force,、uh, and the crystallize of Sino-American rapprochement. As to American、uh, China policy during the 1968 presidential campaign,、uh, all case、uh, candidates advocated a shift from the containment. And the confrontation to a reconciliation and a peaceful engagement. The point、uh, was how to achieve this goal.、Uh, therefore, in、uh, the eyes of the、uh, Nixon and the Kissinger, building bridge through through the trade and the communication was uh, uh, one uh, uh, major action. Nixon had followed with the promise to move from the era of confrontation to an era of the negotiation and the peaceful competition, in which the United States would extend the hand of friendship to the United、uh, to the Soviet Union and to the China.、Uh, The Nixon administration had tried to use the relaxation on the control of the trade with China as leverage in the rapprochement process. Nixon told business groups in the 1969, we,、uh, he said China would become one of the five economic superpowers of the world in five. To 15 years time, Nixon repeated his strong views that president present present prohibition on the trade with the China、uh, was uh, uh, ridiculous. He said, "When the Vietnam War is over, we will say to China if they are able to buy from us, we should not anticipate a huge market, but." There will be something in it. So the exacting literature has focused on how U.S. business、uh, men strive to open China's market. Here, the Boeing company provides a good example.、Uh, this company lay off half of、uh, its employee. Between 1969 and 1971, and was looking for a new markets. Learned that China was interested in its commercial aircraft. He tried to establish contact with Beijing. After Nixon visit China for the first time, invited a group of American businessmen to attend a semi-、uh, Annual trade fair at Guangdong, and the Boeing uh, uh, represent, uh, representatives participated in September 1972. After five months negotiations, Boeing company cut a deal with Beijing,、uh, with the China National Machinery Import and Export Corporation, for ten Boeing 707s. Was at one hundred and fifty million U.S. dollars, according to U.S. export control system. At the time, however, Boeing Company had to apply for lines to export this、uh, aircraft to China. But uh, uh, the DOD, the uh, uh, Department of Defense, attempted to block. Boeing's uh, uh, applications on the ground that China would uh, 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 send these aircraft to North Vietnam. 
Nixon managed to silence the Pentagon and urged the Department of Commerce to grant the needed export alliance to Boeing. This Boeing sale surprised many contemporary scholars who predicted that the U.S.-China trade would progress slowly. Uh, in the context of a Chinese domestic politics condition at the time, American policy exacted great influence upon the historic process of China's reform and opening. Sino-American rapprochement and American economic engagement added a momentum to end the Cultural Revolution in China and start a new exciting era of opening up and economic reform. I think this is changing the China's back backwardness. Uh, because the U.S. allowed the Chinese access to Western uh, high technology, Beijing had the opportunity to import high technology and equipment from the United States and other Western countries immediately following uh, Nixon's trip to Beijing in early 1972. A few Chinese leaders uh, had realized the need to adjust the economic policy and expand uh, uh, the foreign trade. The Ch uh, China's fourth five-year economy development plan uh, from 1971 to 1975 attempted to correct the extreme left policy and call for the more important import of foreign industrial equipment and high technology. Despite the uh, heightened anti-imperialist and capitalist uh, propaganda at China, in China at the time, Zhou Enlai, uh, the Chinese premier at the time, and other uh, top leaders in charge of the econo economy, they battled with the ultra-leftist wing within the party and uh, augmented China trade with the West with the center of the chairman Mao Zedong. The high-tech equipment and this technology plant include the chemical fiber factory, uh, the chemical uh, fertilizer factories, a uh, complete uh, modern steel rolling mill, Boeing, trade and plan, and other uh, high tech project. All of this at uh, uh, all of these high technology and equipment were imported from the uh, uh, Washington, London, and Berlin, Paris, Rome, and Tokyo. Uh, among the twenty seven uh, uh, advanced plans. Uh, uh, seven, seven plants were imported from the United States. Uh, it was about $4.3 billion at the time. So the imported plants called the uh, 4-3 plan at the time. The import, uh, the import uh, installation operation of these factories and high-tech plants not merely greatly improve the Chinese industrialized level, boost the agricultural output, raise the living standard of the ordinary Chinese people, but also dramatically change the pattern of the Chinese foreign trade which had been shaped since the establishment of the People's Republic of China. Unlike 1950s and 1960s, this led China to engage more and more foreign trade with the Western countries than with the uh, Soviet bloc. As the contact with the Western businessmen has, be, uh, has been increased, 
the Chinese leadership become more and more conscious of the uh, market system. In the meantime, the choice of the site uh, to install and to construct these uh, technical plants directly result in re-establishing the coast eastern and the southeastern China and other more developed area as a center of national economic development. This strategic adjustment fundamentally abandoned Mao's policy of constructing so-called big and small three fronts in Mandarin uh, Da Xiao uh, Sanxian uh, in China West and the Southwest region as a primary goal to prevent the war against China, which most likely launched by American uh, imperialists and the Soviet revisionists at the time. Uh, Beijing's uh, experiment with the West country transformed the Cold War from the bipolar one into something much more complex and uh, do much to bring China back into the international system and they established the cornerstone for the opening up and the economic reforms through the era of Deng Xiaoping uh, following the end of the uh, Cultural Revolution. Deng Xiaoping later recalled in the 1987, uh, he said, as far as the economic reforms are concerned, we experimented with these ideas in 1974 and 1975. So without the groundwork laid in the 1970s, the fast growth of Sino-American trade in the last 30 years would have been unimaginable. Once more and his radical success had dispelled from the saying by the late 1970s, Deng Xiaoping and uh, the uh, President Jimmy Carter uh, moved rapidly to establish the full diplomatic relations between the two countries. China was able to draw more the sources of the United States from the high technology to the capital. Uh, first, uh, to repair the damage caused by the Cultural Revolution and the most other policy, and uh, then embark on the extraordinary and the rapid development in the 1980s and uh, in the 1990s. So Nixon's visit to China started a process and the consequences of which we can see today. Uh, most important of all, uh, Sino-American rapprochement and the China nation moves away from the Soviet bloc, orientated foreign trade to the West oriented one, single a uh, critical victory for the United States in the Cold War. Uh, it would significantly improve the U.S. strategic position in the global competition with uh, the, uh, the, the Soviet Union at the time. Throughout the Cold War, both the United States and the Soviet Union frequently claimed that the Third World could achieve their national modernization by following the United States model or the following the uh, Soviet Union models for their development. China's open to the industrialized world signifies the beginning to abandon the Soviet model and convert it progressively to a market economy. This historical change in China was a powerful testament to the superiority and the applicability of the United States model. Therefore, the renewed Sino-American economic relations in the early 1970s 
total the balance of power between the two conflating superpowers towards the United States, both in the fundamental ideology and in the immediately strategic aspect. Uh, so uh, let me give uh, a few words of my conclusion. In the case of Nixon's trade uh, liberalization, his administration used such a policy to pursue U.S. foreign policy objectives and to advance U.S. national interests uh, in the changing the global balance of power. Uh, I think this shows why and how Nixon administration downgraded the importance of the ideology uh, when they adjust and remove the trade restrictions and embargo against uh, the uh, Soviet Union and uh, the China. Uh, uh, my proposed uh, research, I, I think, it can uh, promote the knowledge of the relations between the changes of the international system and the power struggle within the Chinese high-level uh, uh, top leaderships. Uh, the impact exacted by the Chan Ch China's domestic power struggle on the Sino-American normalizations, on China's development of economic relations with the West, and on the entire process of the uh, China's reform and uh, opening. Uh, so I, I think the study gets a deeper understanding of the fact that how the leaders in the communist nation consider uh, legitimating their revolutionary regimes by the means of economic reforms and particularly by opening to the outside world. Uh, that, that, that's my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you very much, uh, Professor Dai. Uh, it's a, um, a great uh, uh, privilege to be able to uh, comment on uh, your uh, presentation here. Um, first, I, I think in terms of your, uh, you know, your, your overall thesis and your handling of uh, Nixon administration's policy, uh, I don't have that much to comment uh, or criticize you on that. I mean, I think... Uh, both in the English presentation and the Chinese version of the paper that you sent me, uh, I think that the way you you know you address nixon 's policy through the use of new American materials, uh, the way you uh, look at nixon 's overall trade policy and then apply that to the specific context of China, uh, all of that is uh, very neatly done uh, and it 's you know very difficult to to argue with but but at the same time. Uh, there were a few areas of this paper where uh, I was hoping I could push you a little bit further. I think it, it definitely raised uh, a few questions for me. Uh, first, uh, as an American scholar, when I hear a presentation by a Chinese scholar, what I always hope is that I'm going to learn something new about the Chinese side. Uh, how did, how did you know, Chinese foreign policymakers view this? And I think that's an area where, uh, you know, the paper uses some Chinese sources, uh, but it doesn't use as many as I would expect. And so I'm, I'm not sure whether this is a problem of what's available. I, I mean, there's the bulk of the new materials that have been uh, declassified by the People's Republic of China in the Foreign Ministry archives recently have, of course, it, it only goes through 1965. Um, but I'm still wondering, you know, if there were sort of a broader array of Chinese sources from the 1970s. I, I don't, you know, I, I haven't read them in detail, but things like, um, you know, Deng Xiaoping's, uh, Deng Xiaoping Nianpu, uh, or yeah. some of those, that would have shed uh, more light on uh, Chinese policy. Uh, I mean, I was really curious about uh, how did the Chinese side see what Nixon was doing? Uh, how did, you know, did, did they only view, uh, I, I mean, I, I think reading your paper, 
it seems almost like you know Zhou Enlai and Mao Zedong just cast aside uh, the previous 20 years of you know the, 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 this this perception that they've had for the previous 20 years that the Western imperialists are out to exploit the third world and take advantage of their resources and you know all of a the sudden they you have them they, they, they seem to almost be jumping at this opportunity uh, presented by the Nixon administration policy and so I'm I'm wondering uh, was there any debate within uh, CCP policy circles at the time. Uh, if there is, do we know anything about it? I mean, it, it could be the case that you've used uh, the, the Chinese sources. Uh, it, it could be the case that you've used the Chinese sources that are that are available, and there's just nothing more that that could have been said. Or is it the case that you sort of wrote the American side of the paper now, and then when you go back to China, you're going to use uh, <laughs> use Chinese sources to to sort of elucidate the Chinese side? Uh, then I, I think there's a few other areas where um, I, I, it's, it's not really, it, it's sort of suggestions for how you might broaden the paper. I think, first of all, uh, right now there's a lot of new scholarship in the field of uh, U.S. diplomatic history on the 1970s. Uh, there's this idea uh, that uh, the United States was declining in certain ways. Uh, there is an economic readjustment uh, that goes on, um, and uh, and and so there's 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 some scholarship on that, and then you also have uh, people that talk about uh, the 1970s as the period in which a new global capitalism comes into being. Uh, for instance, Walter Lefebvre's book, Michael Jordan and the New Global Capitalism, is sort of uh, one of the uh, ones that, that one of the books that comes to mind that was probably the first book to deal with that. And then you've had, uh, I, I think, a more more recent. There have been a few new doctoral dissertations by people working in uh, the field of U.S. foreign relations. Uh, many of them say the same thing about the 1970s. They say that during the 1970s, you get this era where you have uh, an inc where you basically have the beginning of globalization. You have satellites, mass media, uh, all of these things are increasingly uh, you know, they, they increasingly break down uh, national barriers uh, to trade and to the free flow of exchange of ideas that have existed previously. And uh, China is sort of one of the countries that, that ends up becoming integrated uh, in, in this uh, in, in some ways or another. Uh, on, on, so, so that was in one suggestion, that you might sort of uh, think about this topic uh, American, the, the U.S. approach to trade liberalization mm -hmm. in China during the 1970s in light of the broader structural shifts in the global economy that was going on, that, that were going on. You get at some of this, I think, when you talk about Nixon's perceptions, but I, I, I think there's some other areas where you might have made it more explicit. Um, also, uh, on the subject of economics, you, you, when you talk about Chinese policy again, uh, you talk a lot about their import plan. Uh, but you know, today China, China is known as a market, obviously, uh, but it's also known for its exports. So I'm also wondering, you know, is there any sense in China of the America market. You know, it's clear that Nixon has this perception of the China market, which goes back uh, very far in American diplomatic history. You can trace that idea all the way back to the 19th century, this, this notion that, you know, these hundreds of millions of Chinese, if we can only get them each to buy one American T-shirt, how much American <laughs> T-shirt companies are going to make. Uh, so, so this idea of the China market has been alive in U.S. policy for a long time. But I'm, I'm wondering if there's any sense here, you know, I, I, I mean, because, again, when I read your handling of the Chinese side, it almost seems that they're enthusiastic about Nixon's idea. But I, I mean, I wonder if they uh, were, were um, you know, what they were hoping to get in return. Uh, another issue I, I, is your final point about modernization. And, and this is an area where I would urge you to be a little bit cautious. 
Uh, in your final paragraph, you say that uh, there were two models, sort of the Soviet model and the American model. And it's American policy in the 1970s that forces China or that sort of encourages China to abandon the communist model and veer more towards the American model. Uh, but what I see going on in China it, since the 1970s uh, is not really emulation of the American model, but more uh, emulation of what could be called the, the Asian model. And especially, uh, I, I mean, I think China's approach to economic development and modernization much more closely resembles South Korea or Taiwan uh, than it resembles the United States with a powerful central government that, uh, you know, uh, uh, directs capital, uh, invests in infrastructure, and so forth and so on. So uh, when you talk about modernization, uh, I think that's, I, I think you should be a little bit uh, careful about how you handle that issue. Um, finally, one minor point. You say um, the, at, at one point of the paper you said that the equipment and technology provided a turning point for ending the Cultural Revolution. And I was sort of curious about how this occurs. I mean, the, when, when I think about the Cultural Revolution, I think of, of something which is heavily ideological in nature. And so how does this sudden import of new technology uh, create this uh, sudden change in, in thinking? So, you know, again, I, I, most, of, most of what I've said I think is mostly in the raise, uh, is mostly in terms of questions and suggestions for how you can sort of broaden this and contextualize it. Um, I hope in the future uh, that uh, when you publish this as a book, you'll have very good Chinese materials that can complement uh, what you did in the American archives. And so then, you know, there's really the potential to create this very balanced picture of what the United States was trying to do in China during this 1970s, how it encouraged liberalization, and how in turn uh, the Chinese responded to that, and ultimately uh, how that uh, gave shape to uh, the great transformation of China during the 1970s. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. Why don't you take a few moments to yeah. respond, and then we'll open up the floor. Okay. Thank you very much, Greg. Uh, uh, is, is, uh, is my my uh, proposed research is uh, uh, my uh, grand uh, strategy to buy a complete book uh, about the China U.S. relations uh, between the 1949 to 1979. Uh, as Greg uh, uh, said. Uh, uh, I, I, f I encountered the difficulty uh, of the materials from the China side because the Chin Chinese archives are opened up to the 1965 now. Uh, I mean the archives from the Ministry of Chinese uh, Foreign Affairs. So there, there are the other important materials about uh, the uh, 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 Chinese, the, uh, the uh, about uh, this 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 period. Uh, you mean Deng Xiaoping, Nian Pu, the cro cro uh, the life chronicle uh, of the uh, life chronicle of Deng Xiaoping, uh, and some the. Uh, Memoirs of the uh, the the uh, decision makers uh, at that time. At that time, so I think the Greg's idea is great. Uh, when I uh, uh, complete my uh, books, uh, I hope the 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 Chinese archives are open to the nineteen seventies. Mm -hmm. So uh, can. Uh, 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 can give uh, give my uh, uh, book uh, very strong explanations. Uh, as to the how the uh, Chinese uh, leadership 
uh, view the American market, I think uh, at that at the time the Chinese leadership pay no attention to uh, American market. They uh, uh, their focus was how, how to import the high tech and the uh, equipment from the uh, the United States and other advanced. Uh, uh, Western countries. So, uh, 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 because uh, uh, at the 1960s and uh, 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 the early 1970s, China has uh, nothing to uh, export except some craft uh, and uh, the uh, Ch China's uh, not the very a, a, a lot of amount of the goods to export uh, to export to the United States and other countries. So I, I think the uh, uh, Chinese leadership uh, uh, didn't pay attention to the uh, foreign market. Uh, as to the uh, uh, you 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 mentioned that uh, the uh, the relationship between the the import uh, of uh, high tech and uh, the equipment uh, and uh, the ending of the uh, uh, cultural revolution. Uh, in my viewpoint, I think uh, the import of uh, such a high tech uh, equipment uh, gave a very shock to the uh, Chinese officials uh, because they from the uh, 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 from the outside of the uh, establishment of the People's Republic of China, uh, uh, all of almost all of the equipment and the plants and the factories are supported uh, were supported by the Soviet Union. Uh, after the Sino-Soviet split in the early nineteen sixties. China has no other sources, had no other sources to get uh, the advanced uh, technologies and the equipment. Uh, for example, uh, uh, China has uh, made a, a helicopter. Uh, it was planned to give to the Hu Qiming, the leader of North Korea, uh, North Vietnam. But it it has a lot of program uh, 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 problems in these uh, 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 helicopters. So you can see uh, there is no uh, there was no other sources for China to import the uh, to contact such high tech knowledge and equipment. So when the uh, uh, when the United States allowed the Chinese access to such high tech equipment and uh, uh, and, uh, and 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 other and other uh, uh, plants, so the Ch Chinese, especially the 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 officials in charge of the uh, import, they felt so shocked because in my memory, I I, I think. Uh, uh, when I wear a, 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 a shirt, it was made by the hand. No, no, no other, uh, uh, no other ad advanced materials for the clothes. So I think th this gave the shock not only to the officials but to the ordinary people. They, they they open their eyes to the outside. They they think the uh, the 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 problem was not revolution, but how to live, how to promote promotion the live stand. I think this is the connection between the uh, import equipment and the ending of the uh, cultural revolution. Uh, 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 I, I think uh, I uh, uh, about uh, the 
you 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 mentioned that uh, 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 there was any debate uh, uh, within the Chan uh, CCP leaderships. I think uh, uh, there there was a serious debate about how to deal with the United States, uh, how they uh, how to deal with the uh, West at uh, the uh, in the. Uh, uh, late uh, uh, 1960s and in the early 1970s, uh, particularly after the outbreak of the Sino-Soviet border uh, conflict, so, so, so I, I think the Chinese leadership face the the Soviet m military uh, threat. So they wanted to how how to avoid it. The, the the situation uh, there are uh, there was two views among the uh, CCP leaderships one supported to uh, to to uh, uh, to uh, to some extent I think to make uh, uh, alliance with the Western another think we can uh, 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 we can uh, uh, defense our uh, defense our country by ourselves. So I, I think Mao was the uh, was the uh, the final man to decision how to do with the situation. So I, I don't uh, I, I don't disagree with the uh, uh, Mao Zedong system. Mao uh, is the final person to. Uh, makes the decision how China to do with the other part of the world. Yeah. And next thing, we'll open uh, the, the open up for questions. Then um, I ask that you wait for the microphone. Um, we are being webcast. Um, also, please identify yourself. Um, right back. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for a very uh, interesting presentation, uh, Professor Dai. Uh, You've stressed the uh, Nixon kiss. Oh, my name is Joe Bosco. I'm with CSIS. Uh, you stressed the uh, Nixon Kissinger vision of how uh, opening trade relations would affect the overall economic relationship. <clears throat> I wonder, did did your research indicate any insights on how Nixon and Kissinger felt about the impact on political relations? That is, uh, both in terms of China's internal uh, political development. And in terms of its view of the outside world, did they see economic opening as a force that would cause a, a political liberalization within China? Yeah, yes, thank you. Uh, I, I think uh, the uh, uh, Nixon and the Kissinger uh, has the agreement about how to deal with the uh, outside world. Uh, uh, after he entered into the White House, because both of them uh, had realized that, that the uh, balance of power had changed in the, uh, at that time, so they think they they they, they thought uh, how to deal with the 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 uh, the develop the developing countries such as the China and the other part of the world, so they think. They, they they thought there there was uh, there was uh, many common says uh, uh, between the uh, uh, Nixon and the Kissinger. They think they not uh, not not uh, uh, not only the economic factor was very important to developing uh, to develop the relationship between the United States and uh, the China uh, but the political factor uh, in uh, their uh, in their eyes is so uh, in, in, is so important so uh, I, I think uh, the uh, first of all Nixon and the administration uh, uh, sought the Sino-American relations, uh, uh, fr first of all, from the political viewpoints, the economic uh, uh, economic factor is the means to uh, achieve their goal to 
to to to realize their 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 so-called dream about the uh, their their dream and their plans about the uh, the, the the world the the thing they thought, yeah. Hi, I'm Peg Christoph, and I'm with the Towson University professor. And I was wondering, in your uh, research, if you focused at all on how the Chinese leadership viewed educational exchanges in addition to the science and technology aspect. In other words, we have the hardware, understanding acquiring the goods, but what about the infrastructure, the educational infrastructure? Uh, so far, I, I, I haven't seen the material about the education, the exchanging between the Sino-American and relations at that time, but but I I know, I know uh, there are there was a lot of people, young people, come to the United States after the Nixon visited visited to Beijing, but th this is I I think were very limited in. Uh, Small circle. Some 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 people come to the uh, United States at that time. Uh, was the sons and the daughters from the uh, top uh, leaders. So I think the extent of the education uh, between the two countries may uh, I think uh, augmented after the. A fully diplomatic relations uh, establishment uh, uh, when the uh, Deng Xiaoping and uh, uh, Jimmy Carter signed the treaty, uh, b but I, I, I think the, the 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 education exchange and uh, has the equal importance with the political and the e economic uh, uh, factors. Uh, between the relations of the uh, United States and uh, China, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Robert Keller with Sava Solutions. Um, I'm assuming that with the uh, technology from the West, uh, that China was able to produce finished products that it could not before mm -hmm. produce. Now, it also probably had relationships with Soviet bloc and third world countries to, to import finished products. With, the, uh, come, with Western technology coming in, how did that affect the relationships with these other countries, the trade relations? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Would you? I'm sorry. Would you re repeat your question? Uh, yes, sir. I I'm I'm curious about how the uh, Chinese becoming able to produce their own products mm -hmm. with Western technology mm -hmm. instead of importing them from other countries. How did that affect their trade relations with the other countries and the Soviet bloc? Okay. Sure, uh, I think the this uh, this equipment uh, and high tech uh, were uh, Im uh, imported from the United States and other West countries. The products, the products from these factories and the plants at the time, uh, were satisfies the China's market. I, I think, such as the fertilized and the uh, fibers such as so at the same times uh, uh, because of the Chinese revolutionary uh, ideologies we uh, 
China at the time had to support support the North Vietnam and the, the Albania, uh, such as the, the, the so-called France. So uh, some products and uh, uh, and uh, uh, some uh, some products uh, are of the these 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 plants and the factories were uh, exported to these countries. So uh, I think this uh, uh, well uh, would have the uh, significant impact uh, on the China's relations with the. Uh, North Vietnam, North Korea, and other third uh, world countries at the time, because China, uh, also China, had uh, had uh, improved his relations with the United States and other Western countries, but he didn't abandon his uh, its revolutionary ideologies. I, I think at the time, so he had to support it, the world revolution. So I, I think uh, uh, maybe we can uh, explain these questions from the uh, uh, party struggles at uh, that time. When uh, Zhou Enlai, the Chinese premier, uh, uh, he had strived to 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 import this high tech equipment and the, the factories more later criticized him you 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 don't pay your attention to the advanced product you must pay your attention to the politics so i i think uh, the chinese uh, the, the CCP leadership uh, had uh, considers how to uh, deal with its domestic economic development, with the uh, uh, the the uh, uh, its relations with uh, with his so-called friends at the time. So I, I think the uh, the Chinese import of this high-tech plants and the factories uh, has uh, has the uh, not for the not for the china modernization but for the uh, Ch chinese the revolutionary ideologies i think yeah um mike gellner retired foreign service uh, I think this sounds like a fascinating topic on a very key era. Um, I just wonder, if, and what you just said, my reaction is, is the old saying, watch what I do, not what I say. You have to distinguish between the policy and the articulation in defense of the policy, especially at that time. Uh, but my real question goes back to, uh, in light of the past 40 years of opening, compared to the 20 years of being closed, uh, blockaded, whatever term you want. Um, if you step even further back, um, was the 20 year period, in fact, a historic exception in what we're seeing in the last 40 years, a really return to a policy or a, a picture that was, uh, that extended back into the 1700s of growing large international trade uh, between the U.S. and China, between the rest of the world and China, and what we're doing is just seeing a reestablishment of a period that was interrupted by a cycle of depression and war. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I think the import of the uh, uh, High technology and the equipment is very, uh, was very critical uh, movement at that time. It's the critical factors to the China's modernization and, and the development. It uh, uh, had been the uh, significant impact on the uh, China become a, 
a uh, uh, world economic superpowers now, you know. So, uh, uh, in my opinion, I, I think the 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 uh, at the time when the CCP leadership decided to open to the outside world, they 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 think these policies uh, may uh, bring about uh, uh, such uh, consequences. Uh, to establish the uh, establish China's uh, position in the future uh, world economies. So I, I think uh, uh, the Chinese uh, the, the 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 Chinese leadership they sought they sought how to use the uh, economy to prove the 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 relations with other countries uh, is the is their uh, their 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 uh, their thought to their thought to be modernized uh, because just as the uh, Greg talked about the the two uh, uh, two two uh, models between the uh, the United States and the other part of the world. Uh, so the Chinese has uh, developed its national ability with the uh, such with such uh, high equipment and other uh, and, and, and other sources from the United States and the, the uh, Western countries. So I think the uh, the the uh, most decision and uh, the uh, Chinese leadership at that time uh, had made the wise decision to open the China's door to outside, so uh, China can uh, can can develop uh, imitate relations not only in the political. Uh, 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 military uh, economy, uh, not only uh, uh, on the uh, political uh, levels, but on the economic levels. So I, I think the uh, uh, Chinese the leadership's decision to 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 open its doors has the uh, great impact uh, on the. Uh, on the on, uh, outcome of the uh, the uh, and the consequences of the the, the uh, relationship between the uh, United States uh, between the China and the United States China and the Western uh, countries and the China's relations with the third part uh, third world. Uh, uh, so I, I I think it's a, a great uh, uh, it was a great actions for the CCP leaderships to uh, uh, open its doors to the outside and has the close relationship with the rest of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Ivan Ying, uh, concerned with the World Bank. My question is about uh, the China relationship. Uh, China have uh, supported the North Vietnam uh, in the war for many, many years. But then in '79, have a war against the uh, Vietnam. Is there any American influence to the uh, influence to the China decision to go against go to the war against the Vietnam? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, uh, there is a new declassified archives in the Jimmy Carter Library that when the uh, Chinese launched the war against uh, North Vietnam in 1979, uh, the Chinese side reported to the United States every week about the progressive of the battlefields. So I, I think uh, the United States, uh, Jimmy Carter agreed uh, with the Chinese action. So uh, 
uh, so it, uh, after the full uh, diplomatic relations uh, was established, uh, the the China and the United States formed a semi alliance relations at the time. So I think the uh, the United States uh, provided information, especially the military information to the China uh, to support China launch attack against the North Vietnam uh, at uh, in the 1979. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, I think uh, uh, the in initiative to launch attack against uh, uh, North Vietnam is a decision by Deng Xiaoping. When he uh, was in power, there was a, a lot of op uh, opposition uh, in the Chinese army or in the Chinese party. So uh, he wanted to take this opportunity to establish his authorities in the Chinese army and the, in the Chinese party. On the other hand, I think the war against uh, Vietnam uh, at that time is, uh, uh, is to encourage the Chinese, the Chinese the ambition to become a, a power, at least a religion power, because of the uh, uh, after the 10 years Cultural Revolution, China uh, actually was a weak nation uh, in the international, international system, I think. Is that against the general policy and modern Taoism? Tao? I don't know how to translate it in English. That, that, uh, that, that low profile, the uh, general policy. Yeah, you mean Tao Guang Yang Hui. Yeah, in Mandarin, Tao Guang Yang Hui. So that means if they want to play the role in the Vietnam, that means against his uh, general uh, strategy as a Tao Guang Yang Hui. Yeah, I, I think Tao Guang Yang Hui is, uh, is a policy after the 1989. 89? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Because the chairman, yeah. So the uh, before the nineteen before the chairman, uh, China had uh, uh, closed the relations with the United States and the West countries. You know, after the chairman, the situation totally changed. So Deng said, "We allow the the pro." Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Also with the uh, the the Khmer Rouge because the uh, China wants to support the Khmer Rouge. I I think uh, you you uh, this uh, this need more and more archives to support the explanations. <laughs> Any other questions? I I just have one. Uh, any about archives. What are the chances that uh, the foreign ministry will be opening documents soon, closer to 71, 72? Yeah, I, I hear some gear from the uh, 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 Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Well, come here. Uh -huh. Yeah, you, you can ask <laughs> Right, right, him. right. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, I, 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 I know, know. <laughs> but, but I mean, but more, more broadly, yeah, we, but we'll, we'll ask. Uh, we're hoping yeah. that they'll... Um, uh, about uh, uh, maybe in the two or three years. Yeah. 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 And and what about other archives? Party archives, for example. No, no, no. No prospects That's for no opening access it all. to yeah. the party archives, right, right. Uh, including the army archives. Right, right. Yeah. But the local archives, you can visit the uh, local archives mm -hmm. and get some important materials. I right, think. Right. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you very much to both our, our uh, presenter and, and uh, uh, commentator. Thanks.